I've been shooting photo and video professionally on the Fujifilm system for over six years now. Prior to buying the X-T3, since it was the first hybrid camera that could shoot 4K60 internally, which my sports work kind of required, and after being completely underwhelmed by the EOS R, Canon's first real mirrorless camera, like the M50 and now defunct EFN line didn't carry the entire company for years, that's another video, I made the jump because of the value proposition offered at the time that's still offered today by Fuji. Right off the bat, the X-T5 is great and it gets my sign off for anyone who's been on the fence about getting one. But, that being said, I can say without a doubt that if I still had to shoot with the X-T3 today, you really wouldn't be twisting my arm to do it. I plan on doing a video in the future on how consumerism has effectively ruined the entire camera space and maybe to some degree the camera profession, but we'll save that for another time. I decided to do this video because the X-T5 is the true successor of the X-T3 and it may very well be the last photo camera I ever buy. There is one difference that I just can't seem to shake and it's really unimportant, but I'm going to mention it to my fellow weirdos here and it's just that it doesn't feel exactly the same when you pick it up. Whatever the body's made of felt really off for the first two months that I used it, but I think it's because I've definitely surpassed the million photo marker on my X-T3s and I've shot hours upon hours of video with them as well. The X-T5 is lighter and technically superior in every way a camera could be technically superior. But the weight outside of the cage does make me miss the magnesium alloy body of the X-T3. Nostalgia maybe, since that was the camera I bought when I decided that 100% of my income would be coming from working in the creative space as a camera creative, initially as photo and then later and currently as video predominantly. I couldn't bring myself to sell it when the time came to upgrade, so it kind of sits up on my shelf and uh, you know I take it out every now and then. A really weird call on Fuji's end was not giving this thing a grip. The X-H2 is a better workhorse camera for sure, but I would have liked to have the option because I had a grip on my X-T3 and it was great. Granted, you don't really need the extra batteries now that they use the new N126S on this thing, but lenses like the 150-600 and especially the 200F2 are kind of out as a result. You can use them, but it's not all that comfortable. You certainly can use them. It's just weird to grip, and I found myself reaching for my X-H2S or even the X-T3 with a grip at one event last year, and that was so I could keep the 200F2 on me to fire off as needed. That's all the bad I have to say about the camera, which really is all that bad at all. Now with the obvious good, 40 megapixels. I don't care who whines about it, it's nice to have. It not only has IBIS, but it has good IBIS, which is a few steps up from the IBIS on the X-T4. Great battery life, solid styling, industry leading weather sealing, great image quality, great video capabilities, great autofocus and real world use, like I don't know about those weird like strafing tests. And all of that is at a great price with a solid lens ecosystem that's not only priced more competitively than their full frame counterparts, but it's also sized properly and considerably more more travel friendly and friendlier to people with smaller hands. Let's get into this Avatar Fitness Apparel shoot with my friend Babs from a few months back and I'll tell you more about it. We met up at the Baltimore Inner Harbor in Maryland. The lenses I brought with me were the 50F1, the 33 f1.4, and the old 16mm f1.4 which turned out to be a treat to use on the X-T5. Real quick, if you're watching this far in the video, go ahead and toss me a like and subscribe. I'm really feeling like making more camera videos this year and I'd like to try out a few different editing styles and maybe a few non-gear videos as time progresses, but we can chat about that in the comments. Now back to the video. So going back to that day, it was a beautiful day and it, this was a natural light shoot. I shot with a 33 f1.4 quite a bit, and honestly, my 50 f1 is in danger of potentially losing its top spot as my favorite portrait lens. Combined with the X-T5 and the 40 megapixels, like I can crop in as aggressively as I want. I was a little hesitant to pick this camera up initially because some people reported that the images were soft for some reason when cropping in, like not even pixel peeping, but I definitely didn't find that to be the case. The Baltimore Inner Harbor is really vibrant and I could do a summer of photo shoots very easily over there. You have a number of ships around, they serve as great backdrops, you can go on top as you'll see in a bit and shoot on the ships themselves. That was a good warm up set for us and I think we rolled into what was probably my favorite set of this shoot right here. We donned the Water Nation attire and immediately by the harbor obviously we had to go by the water for these shots. And keep in mind, again, this is natural light. Up the vibrancy a bit, did my standard edits, and I think the images came out really well all around. 
I really did like this little anchor and the framing with the backdrop there. You had the brick going on, the water wasn't blue, so it lent itself to complement the brown on site as well. The photos here came out really well. And I ended up really liking these shots. Did I take too many? Possibly, but we also haven't seen each other in a couple of months and we were catching up while we were out shooting that day. Now this one, let me pause right here. Before I got the X-T5, there were a ton of warnings that the first generation lenses simply aren't gonna work out. They're not like the linear motor ones. Also, I don't like shooting wide, not people. I don't like shooting people wide at all, but I had a change of heart during this photo shoot. And nowadays I do actually carry the 16 with me and shockingly, I've started using it as well. We found this big old turbine and a couple of exaggerated angles. Took a few shots there and then went over with, uh, okay, I haven't seen Avatar, but I'm pretty sure that's the Fire Nation. And took a few shots by this battleship. The autofocus on the camera just, it didn't miss anymore. It has essentially the same hit rate as my R5. You already know. Also, I feel like we're beating a dead horse at this point, but whenever they're talking about APS-C cameras and low light, this area, by the way, not well lit at all. You can see some of the grain in the 360 footage, but it just, it wasn't great. Like all these shots were indoors. They were with ambient light. Uh, I did take the yellows down quite a bit for post-processing sake, since I didn't have a strobe with a gel to match and kind of take care of that on its own. And, well, this is another shot right now with the 16. And if memory serves me right, this is actually the first full set I did of a person with just this camera. I brought it with me on some jobs and snapped a few pictures that you might have seen throughout the video. But after this, and I don't know why I'm surprised. I, I mean, I shot with the X-T3 for years, but if someone were shooting professionally, like taking portraits and whatever, this is, I only bring it up because it, it's so weird. When you do this stuff for a living and you have like your personal collection that separates your work equipment, not just for insurance purposes, but also just for your own peace of mind, you can't help but look at the images sometimes and just question why you own so much gear. Probably a good topic for another video as well. This was shot back in the summer and it's almost spring here in the DC region. Since the shoot, I've actually left my Canon gear home for photos because this really is one of the lightest, most cost-effective, and most capable cameras ever made. I've covered everything from pack shots to portraits to protests against government complicity in an act of genocide to some really quick video. And in all honesty, I can't imagine ever needing another camera for photos specific for the rest of my life. I mean, at this point, what's left to improve on? The autofocus issues have been sorted out and are finally on par with the Canon R5, which is what I used to shoot a lot of my sports content with. The image quality is astounding. The battery life is great. And heck, if you fit it with a pancake lens, it comes out to about the same size as an X105 or 6 now. Both of which, by the way, are inferior to this camera in every way a camera can be inferior. Now, camera improvements have been incremental at best since 2018, and you could very easily build a career off of anything released over the past 10 years at this point, specifically when it comes to photography, and the past five years when it comes to video. Don't get it twisted, I absolutely adore this camera, and it's the one I take with me when I go every now, but does this now mean that everything before it is now obsolete junk? Some of my favorite photos I've ever taken were with the X-T3, and that camera is now a fraction of the price it used to be. If you're looking to upgrade or you need to crop multiple compositions from one shot for work or something, then the X-T5 is the solution you're looking for for that particular problem. That being said, if you're looking to get into photo and video and you love the Fuji colors, but you're hesitant to get a camera that's already like two generations behind at this point, not only do I want to stress that you shouldn't be, but an X-T3 paired with some red badge lenses, cards, a grip, all that can be had for the price of an X-T5 body alone, and if you're not printing your photos, you'd be hard pressed to find a difference in image quality, even if you're shooting billboards. The reason for that is that Fuji's lenses aren't an afterthought like APS-C lenses are for other manufacturers. So the sensor largely doesn't matter from an image quality perspective when going from camera body to camera body like it does with other manufacturers. You can check out my video on the budget X-Mount X-T200 that I'll link above to see as much. The camera bodies are phenomenal, make no mistake. 
but it's the lenses that make the system timeless. Even the first gen lenses like the 16mm f1.4 hold up in the test of time despite claims that they wouldn't resolve with higher megapixel Fuji cameras. Let me know what you'd like to see a video on next. Film lenses on a Fuji? Something a little more video centric? What I wouldn't use a Fuji camera for? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you at the next one.